Hi guys, uh, welcome to my channel. Uh, I'm Chris, and this will be my first videos in the uh, Belimo Actuary series. So this video shows basic knowledge uh, regarding this actuators. Um, please comment if you think I missed or misunderstood any points. And, um, the the comments will be greatly appreciated. So today I will be talking about the uh, LF24 SRUS actuators. Um, uh, as you can see, the label is here. It says it's assembled in the USA. Spring return actuators, two to ten volt DC control input, thirty-five inch pound of uh, rated torque, and one fifty second to uh, fully return to the original position from the fully open or fully closed positions. Um, the power input of this one will be 24 volt AC DC, uh, 50 or 60 hertz. Um, this has 5 volt amperes of power consumptions and 2.5 watt. Okay, so this is what it looked like on the label. And uh, I'm going to show you also a chart of how to read the label. So as you can see in here, um, this is the chart of the name. So uh, a TF usually uh, a LF would be 35 inch pound this one doesn't have anything after the LF so which is normal this should just be normal speed doesn't have a neck or anything a blank mean none the 24 on a power supply is either 24 AC or DC power supply um, you will see like actuator that have the 120 or 230 in the name Usually that means 120 volt AC and 230 volt AC. So LF24, that is uh, 35 inch pound of torque and 24 volt power supply. Next, you see the the SR, which is this can be controlled by signal 2 to 10 volt DC. Um, you can see it's either blank, which means it can be fully closed or fully open only. Um, MFT uh, or other uh, abbreviations. Uh, this unit unfortunately doesn't have the uh, auxiliary switch which is very cool uh, functions uh, which I can show you in the future if I have a chance but uh, this unit doesn't have that um, S in the, in the label and finally it's have the US which, is, which means like it's assembled in the US and um, these are the one that it can have on the label and then here they all explain here so let's move in on to unboxing the, the actuator so as, as you can see the shift in the uh, kind of like cardboard box so you unbox it here and when you unbox it it's very interesting because it's kind of like a, a manual um, manual container so I'll move the uh, actuator on the side. So it's here. The first thing I would like you to look is look for your unit here, 24SR US, and try to see all the spec that um, according regarding this unit. So you can see this returning time, power consumptions, power supply. You can see control input as say in here. This one doesn't have the auxiliary switch, so you don't see it. But with the auxiliary switch, you see the S uh, in the name of it. Okay, so these are all the uh, installations instruction that you can do when you have the. Uh, we have to do the installation on damper. So this one for the retrofit one, you have the adapter kit that um, usually you have to ask or go on the Lima website to uh, take a look. And um, these are some tips um, that you look for when you do the installations. And just talk about this auxil auxiliary switch. So it's really cool that the uh, you you can select the angles that the uh, will either trigger or not will um, open the switch. So for example, if you select like a forty five degree. The um, the angle of the the angle here will travel to 45 degree. It will either disconnect or connect or may say open or close a contact. So you you can either turn on a fan that I can see usually in the hard wire um, 
uh, interlock or you can just turn off like uh, close the damper or something like that close the auto damper uh, the next thing I would like you to read or look at is this wiring diagram so usually you see this guy is just the on and off so just LF and then they have the S this can be done either with this guy or well I think I believe with any other with the S on it and then uh, the standard wiring is this one um, the wiring diagram for the one we're using is this one 4 to 20 milliamperes um, this, um, in practical this is 2 to 10 volt DC because I see a 500 volt uh, for, I mean, sorry, I mean 500 amp resistor here, which comes, will convert the signal to 2 to 10 volt DC. Um, it will go control signal to this, and then the BU would, will give back feedback here. Okay, so uh, it, will, it will be great if you check this one first, so you know what you're actually doing. So I'll save this on the side, and uh, you can refer to to it as manual when you uh, before you installed it. Okay, so this is what the unit looked like. Um, so this will be the clamp you will put the actuator, I mean the damper sharp in. Gonna there you go. So you unscrew this, put a sharp in between this, and uh, you you screw it to tighten it. And usually, I would just um, take this out if I want uh, the whole thing to come apart. So just take this thing out, and you see, you can take this apart. So you can either mount it here on the back when the shaft is short, or you can mount it here when the shaft have the uh, adequate length. And then uh, you can put either this is the um, uh, we call it position indication indicator. So you can put it here, or you can put it uh, right here. If the uh, damper doesn't move all the way from zero to uh, like 180 degree. Okay, so there we go. I'm just gonna put it back like this, and put this on top here. That will lock it in place. Pretty cool. And you can see this is the, just a mechanical. Um, lock I guess so the damper kind of hit it right here you can also move this guy right here so you can limit the uh, motion of the actuator um, as you can look down here it say all of the information regarding the wirings so black red white and green so usually um, white is the signal and green is the feedback one so black and red, I already opened this, I already wind this in, but this will be the power supply. So please do not short anything with a rat. Uh, it, it will and it can destroy your actuator. i seen it. Um, it will make your actuator running weird if you're lucky. So do not short um, black and red or any wire like red with green or red with uh, white. Okay, so... Uh, is not connected to power right now so I'm being reckless uh, so here's the direction control so if you look at this let's say counterclockwise this is will be the directions uh, just just showing you that it will be moving like this so you will base on this things to see if it's moving uh, in the direction that you want so here counterclockwise here's clockwise so this is how you tell which phase it um, you can you can you can look at down here. So direction control mean when this one doesn't have any voltage, uh, where would be the first? What would be the initial position, or we call fail safe positions? So uh, so uh, this will show the uh, direction a bit. So see, it will move to the uh, initial directions, or we usually call fail safe directions. Uh, we'll move counterclockwise. If you select this switch, you select this one, it will be like this. So if it will move to the, the initial position when there's no power going to it. So uh, fail state position. And I'll show you later when uh, I have it well, connected to the power. So same thing on the other side. You see this, and uh, they will fully explain on this side too. So 
There you go, clockwise and counterclockwise. Uh, I talk enough about this and let's power this up. So one thing, um, I connected to my Delta controllers, which is uh, the DSC 1616E. This guy have the power um, rating of 40 volt ampere. And this guy have 5 volt ampere. So the total volt rating power consumption is 45. Um, my power supply is 100 volt ampere. So please make sure uh, if you ever do it on like a like a power supply like at home, please make sure that you have enough power. Okay, so just check. So now I'm gonna power it on. I'm gonna plug it in the power of the, the controller. Um, as I told you, the white line gonna be the signal one. I'm gonna connect it to output number one. There we go, and as you can see, I put number one, and then we got hand off and auto. So auto is like auto, auto controllers. It's gotta be programmable, but we just gotta be for demonstration purpose only. So I'm just gonna do hand and off, which is 10 volt and zero volt. So this will either go all the way or don't go anywhere. Or fail safe position, that's what I should say. it. And notice, since this one have an SR on the name of it, which means it can be modulated. It can be modulated. Okay, now I'm gonna turn on the power. Boom! There we go. Controller have power. Good. And then now you can see, uh, it's not moving, cause it's have power, but it's not moving. Cause why? I'm sending zero volt here. It's an initial position zero volt. And look at this. So it's selected here. So when zero volt, it rotate like this. So it rotate like this. So it is at the uh, initial position right now, and it rotate like this. And then check when I when I change these things. Direction controls here. Notice a move because now it will go like this instead, and then it start to move this guy to here, which is the fail safe position. So most of the time uh, for heating um, purposes, not with this one, I see more with a smaller one that they use for radiators or wall fin. Um, they do normally open, which is the, which is this guy. Because it's open the other way. So it's normally open. So in case like the controller lost power or this thing lost power, It'll go to fail safe position and then by the mean of fail safe i show you when I disconnect the power this thing will automatically go back to that position so this is zero volt i don't have any power coming to this guy uh, i don't have yeah no power just zero volt i mean no signal just zero volt signals it does have power but no signal coming to this and then let's wait till let's go to the final positions, uh, which is around 150 second, as I say. Uh, I think this SR here stands for self return. I'm not sure, but let's see. All right, almost there. Ba -ba -ba. And I will send after this, I'll send 10 volt to this one, so I'll move all the way back here, and then I'll disconnect the power, so you see what happened. So what happened for this direction control will happen for the other one too. So I just show you one, and you kind of imagine what happened to the other one, okay? So right now, it's almost there, it's almost getting to the, uh, the initial position or fail safe positions. Just wait a bit. Yeah, see? So this one don't ever don't ever short it. Don't ever short it. This guy is just the uh the feedback one. So it's not really important right now. I'm just gonna leave it hanging. But don't ever short this guy, okay? Don't ever short it. It'll be a good habit if I uh put a merit on it. 
Okay, so you see, it's at the uh, fail safe position right now. I'm gonna send 10 volt to it. Boop. Oh, wrong one. There we go. And you see it start moving. Because I just sent 10 volt to it. There we go. So, 0 volt, 10 volt. 0 volt, 10 volt. Uh, the best thing is by looking at the uh, position indicator here. So, 0 volt, 10 volt would be down here. And a common, um, here's the experience. So, the common mistake when the electrician installed the actuators either uh, look for the sharp, usually they not install in the middle of the things. Like, it should be, sorry, just a moment. It should be installed right here in the center, not like off like this okay so when you check it make sure they install right in the middle not off anywhere because that can and damage can and will damage the uh, the damper and the second mistake i saw the electrician do when i installed this is the initial position which is the fail safe we selected at nine when i installed it it's usually off like eight or seven something like that or is not matching with a damper so what it does is is not moving all the way or is not fully close and fully close to damper and then you got like a 10 percent gap or in my case 10 percent i saw 20 percent before and you wonder what's wrong with the feedback and it turned out just something is not installed right so make sure you check for that before you know checking messing around with the uh the scale range and then thinking your 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 actuator is wrong but check for that before doing anything else and then another thing is the feedback make sure it's not shorted like this thing here if it's shorted it'll give you a weird weirdest weirdest reading ever okay so this guy make sure it's not shorted make sure it's not like um mistakenly put in ground yeah just that and here you see the uh indicator here moving to zero Oh, funny things. Um, when I check this, uh, you usually don't have as that much lighting in here, so I I usually don't cannot see where it's moving to. So what I do is I just feel it. I put a finger here. If I feel it pushing, I know it's moving this way. When I feel it pushing, I move moving this way. Dangerous. Don't do this when it's near here, because can literally like pinch your finger. Yeah, but it's fast. So. Anyway, so it's moving to zero right now when it's in 10 volt. But right now I'm gonna I'm gonna demonstrate what it does by saying fail safe position. So here's the power. I'm gonna disconnect the power. Disconnect the power. Oops. Hmm, interesting. So disconnect the power doesn't do anything then. Uh let's see. What about nope? Zero signal come in here. Yeah, so this K doesn't return if we disconnect the power. So there must be always power going to the unit, no matter what. So if you disconnect the power, it won't move back. So it won't guarantee that the valve will open when the controllers fail or when there's no power to the valve, but it will guarantee that uh, when there's no signal coming to this actuator and this actuator is power, the disc will move to fail safe position. So, well, I learned something new. Interesting. Okay. Uh, yeah, so I think that's it. Um, it moving very slow, but here. Oh, another thing. Here's another tip I want to show you guys. Um, so, when you check for. Um, if the valve's fully open or fully closed, you can do this thing too. Just use this if you don't have access to like the hand off an auto on that one. It's, it's really useful, but make sure to put it back when you're done with it. That's it. Thanks for watching, and uh, if you like my content, uh, please consider subscribe. It's Chris. Bye, guys. Okay, so I'm wrong when saying there's no self-return on this thing. Uh, the SR may really be standing for the self-return. Um, here I'll demonstrate it again. This thing is moving to this position and yeah. So it's moving there because that the initial positions. I set it to... Uh,
zero volt, I believe. Yeah, zero volt right here. So, uh, let's wait a bit. I chose this, so this guy should rotate like this. Interesting. Okay. So right now it's moving there. Let's see what it does when I turn off the power. In one. Oh. Yeah, see? So I will try this when I say it does have spring return. That's pretty fast, actually. That's very fast. Just in case, like, um, freeze that tripped. That will disconnect the power, go to it, something like that. That's when free sets trip. Uh, I'll I'll show you like um. I'll show you a free how free set work in the next videos. But this one, I'm just gonna focus on this actuator. So let's see if I do this. Nothing happening. Okay, power to on, and then let me do, yeah, we're seeing like that. So, what I'm, yeah, it's moving. So what I'm suggesting is the counterclockwise thing is for the spring return. So you see the spring moving like this is counterclockwise. So this guy is the rotation of the spring. Yeah, so when there's no power, um, that will be the position that move to. All right, so let's try it again. This time I'm gonna move it very slowly, um, just like around two, and I'm I'm gonna disconnect the power here, just to see. Oh, sorry about the noise. Just some guy trying to reach me. All right, so this should be noticeable. Boop, there we go. Yep, so there's no power. It's gonna move like this. I learned something new today too. So counterclockwise for the spring return. All right, cool. Thank you guys. Bye.